Did you know that About Vintage collaborated with Frederic Constant on a couple time pieces, the 1988 Flyback and the Moon Phase? Definitely want to check them out on About Vintage's website. But with no further ado, let's dive into. It's always time. Hello everybody, welcome to Average Show Watch Reviews. We'll be doing more than just reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 1820 automatic from About Vintage. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and also click a like. That is the most charitable way to help support the channel. So with no further ado, let's dive into the review slash unboxing. Oh yeah. All right, so let's unbox the About Vintage by Scott Anderson. Comes in a cardboard box. You've got the gold embroidery here. And as we open it, we've got ourselves a little booklet here and it gives you some how to care for your watch, what all the water resistance stuff means, gives, gives you some what the atmospheres equals to meters and all kinds of different information here. So pretty cool. Shows you how to size your buckle as well. All right. Comes as a protective foam and I like the little flap here that always helps to slide the watch out or should I say the box out and they do these wooden boxes which are really nice and you can see the engraved logo in the box but um, just a really nice touch um, love the packaging from about vintage and then we open it up and there we go there is the watch and it does come with some more materials 1820 and it just gives you some some facts here pretty cool touch there and you've got your instructions on how to set the watch all right and there you go so let's get into the review. All right, so let's take a closer look at the 1820 automatic about the vintage. Right away, you notice the blue hands and the blue applied indices. Very, very nice touch, and they really do stick out on this very minimalistic dial. The dial is actually done very uniquely. I mean, I've never really seen a dial like this before. You've got the minutes on the inner dial you've got the hours on the hour or on the outer and it just really plays well um, very minimalistic but yet it, it gets the job done that second hand there it's got that circle that's framing out each one of these minutes which is really cool and look at that date wheel uh, the date wheel does match the dial and it actually does say date there so there you go there i do like the fact that the second hand does touch each one of the indices out here um, on the railroad track uh, chapter ring there and the minute hand actually does touch as well you've got that vintage style hands there which goes along with the theme so as you can see it's got some anti-reflective coating on it so let's take a look at well let's just take it off the pillow first and foremost I think that'll play a little bit better for us here it is on that thick mesh bracelet that they provide and it is very quality it feels nice it's got a nice brush buckle and you can even see that it's got the about vintage logo there um, but yeah the bracelet's really really nice and they also give you an extra as well in a in this box here and i'll show this watch to you on the alternate strap um, I like it better on the mesh personally, but either way, you've got the quick release system, which I always love, and it's so easy to do. Love the fact that they do it on both their bracelets and their straps. I actually have a, this is my second about vintage. Here's the first piece that I've reviewed 
Um, this was probably over a year ago at this point. But as you can see here, I have worn it, but they do the quick release system on their bracelets, which is really, really cool. Love that touch, but yeah, this thing is definitely, it needs a bath actually, so. But yeah, I just wanted to show you that real quick. Um, check out my video on this one. This is the, the 1926 at sea. Really, really cool watch. Um, definitely check that out. So, we take a look at the case finishing. I love the fact that they do the vertical brushing as opposed to the horizontal. It really gives this case a really premium look and feel. It just plays that light really nicely. And while we have it on its side, take a look at that lug pattern there, or, or the lugs, the way it actually lays. And you can even see on the lug itself, we can see how the watch is brushed. You do have a signed crown and you've got the coin edging on the crown itself. And we do have a tag on the back. I did not get this one engraved. Whereas the other one I have here, I did get that engraved as you could see. So you so you do get the uh, the, the um, option of engraving as you can see here. Um, obviously I wear this watch, so this is what's gonna happen after, you know, a year of wearing it. Um, so yeah, you can do that if you wish. Um, they do do this at actually no cost so the engraving would actually go right into the mirror polish here so pretty cool there you do have design in Copenhagen you've got the um, the location right there pretty cool this is the NH35 movement from Seiko and you've got your five atmospheres of water resistance sapphire crystal 316 L stainless steel pretty pretty standard stuff guys you do have a polished bezel and let me show it to you on my seven inch wrist today I am wearing the Timex Snoopy and it actually has ah. did you see that right there so I know I banged this on the door jam, but I was able to actually scratch that off. That was just a paint. Thank goodness that wasn't a scratch. Otherwise, I would need some poly for that um, since this is an acrylic crystal. So, But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the one with the sapphire crystal right here. So I'm going to put this on the wrist. And again, this, sh this shark mesh here, really um, just, just a nice, nice feeling bracelet. Everything works perfectly well. And there it is on the wrist. Very clean. Um, I have a seven inch wrist. I would have liked to have seen this watch actually smaller. Um, let's take some dimensions cause it's looking a little bit larger than I would have liked. Whereas for instance, this other one here that they have um, this one here is a 40 millimeter and that one definitely is smaller. So it appears that we have a larger watch here with the 1820 series. So we're going to take out our trusty calipers and see what we've got going on here. Case diameter is... We're going to add a 40 millimeter actually looks larger and you've got a 13 millimeter case uh, thickness and our lug to lug is indeed a 48 not too bad and uh, in between the lugs here we're looking at a 20 millimeter so here's the thing guys and I'm going to just do a real quick measurement here just so um, I'm not t telling you something false here but we take a look at this diver here, 
from about vintage. You got a 40 millimeter. So they're both 40 millimeters. So if you take a look at the two watches here, you see you got a lot more dial here than you do here, but yet they're both 42 millimeters. So when it comes to divers, and for me personally, I like 42 millimeter divers because you know they look a little bit larger on the wrist. This one here, I actually would have been fine with a you know a 38 millimeter uh, to be honest with you, but for me, it actually wears like a 42 millimeter, which for this particular watch, I actually, um, my personal taste, it's a little larger on my wrist than I actually wanted it to be. Even though the lug to lug is like right out of 48. So, um, but that's, that's personal preference. Um, but yeah, I would just like to see this shrink, shrunk a little bit for sure. There's no question though that the materials that are used here are quality. Um, I do like the blue hands and those markers there, you can see they actually are applied. Um, there is no luminescence on this watch. You could wear this as a dress watch and this does come with that leather strap. But for me, this is just more of a uh, grab and go kind of watch. Um, it's very casual, but you can dress it up if you, if you wish. Um, so, you know, not a problem there. Uh, this is just one of those watches that, you know, it's got some quality materials. It's got great packaging and it's got that minimalistic look. So if that's what you're looking for, you're definitely hitting the nail on the head with this particular piece. So there's my review of the 1820 automatic. I'm going to flip the camera around and give you guys some final thoughts. The fact that they use a NH35, robust movement. It's kind of like the Toyota Camry. Really no thrills or shrills, but it's gonna be a really reliable movement. Very popular movement uh, picked by manufacturers. So nothing to say, nothing negative to say about that. Um, my only qualms really is the fact that they put by Scott Anderson. It really makes it feel like a fashion brand, especially at that price point. I wanna feel like I'm getting something that's not a fashion brand. So, um, I would honestly, in the marketing, on the, on, the, on the box, just leave off about, or by Scott Anderson, I think um, that would be, for me personally, would make it feel less of a fashion watch. Secondly, I think the size, even though it's a 40 millimeter, it feels like a 42, wears like a 42. And I would like to have seen maybe a, more choices in regards to size, maybe a 38 millimeter, more vintage sizes. Um, the, the dial is stark white, which, you know, for me, if it's about vintage, I'd like to see maybe a, a cream variant, a more distressed dial. Uh, the only thing that really gives me that vintage vibe is the handset. So I'd like to see a little bit more vintage touches on the watch, maybe a distressed leather strap, something that gives me more of that vintage feel, vintage, uh, sizes and whatnot. So that's my two cents. You guys can keep the change and always remember that there's always time to be kind to one another. Please take care of each other and I'll see you guys next time on Average Joe Watch Reviews. God bless my friends.